When you're a dreamer and a nonconformist, when you are principled and know where you're going, people will hate you. Jacob, Joseph, jealousy, and the journey. This is a family saga, a family story of dysfunction. And it started with Abraham. It continues in Isaac. It finds culmination in Jacob. Jacob, who is a twin of Esau, was born clutching Esau's heel. He's a supplanter, one who undermines. Jacob connives, schemes, and tricks, breaks the rules to get what God intended him to have. And you know the story he he tricks his brother Esau and he steals his birthright. He connives him out of his father's blessing. His mother helps him to flee Esau's wrath. And Esau finally catches up with him and the Lord softens Esau's heart. But before that, Jacob wrestles with God. God touches him in his hip and he limps for the rest of his life. He says, your name is no longer Jacob, but Israel. He is tricked by Laban because what goes around comes around. He, he works for the hand of the one he loves, Rachel, but he ends up married to Leah. He has sons with Leah and with Leah's handmaid, but then he works another seven years for Rachel's hand, but Rachel does not bear him in his sons, and finally, in his old age, Rachel bears a son named Joseph. Israel, Jacob, dotes on Joseph. He loves Joseph. Perhaps Joseph is the spit image of his mother Rachel. And because of Jacob's love for Rachel, he almost worships Joseph. He loves him so much that he shows a distinction between him and his other brother. There is, there is this problem that the brothers have with Joseph because the father loves Joseph more than his other brother. That is a recipe for dysfunction. In any family where there is that kind of favoritism, that is dysfunction. You, you, can't, you can't compare one child with another child. You, you can't pit one child against another child or hold one child in higher esteem than another child because it creates hatred in the heart of brothers and sisters. It causes dysfunction. Uh, and, and that child may never achieve all that you have desired because you placed him over and above his brothers and sisters. Don't, 
don't ever ask a child, why aren't you as smart as your brother? Why aren't you as talented as your sister? That may not be their skill set. That may not be their area of giftedness. God gifts everybody with what he wants them to have, not for us to be over one another, but for us to complement one another. This boy Joseph was special. His conscience was tender. His heart was pure. His will was firm. God chose to bless him. And his father loved him so much that he made him a coat of many colors. Now, I've, 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 I've looked at this, and I don't think that this coat was multicolored as it served to distinguish Joseph's multifaceted personality. Be because when you're great, it's because you're good. And when you're good, it's because you're connected to God. And his coat of many colors served to distinguish him as separate and apart because he had a tender conscience, a pure heart, and a firm will because his father sent him to check on his older brother's conduct. And when he went to check on them, they were doing things that would displease the father. But Joseph would not participate in their wrongdoing, in their evil ways, because he had a pure conscience, a pure heart, a firm will, and his brothers mistook his principle for pride. And I think I ought to stop a moment. And say to us, when you are a principled person, when you are a non-conformist, be prepared to be hated by your brother. When, when you don't bend the rules, talk back to me if you can. When, when you don't undermine, when you don't try to get people on your side, uh, when you just walk the straight and narrow, when you do what's right for the sake of doing what's right, you will be hated. I think I ought to say a word to you church people here. And you Christians here who are trying to get everybody to like you. And trying to get everybody to see your point of view. When you do what's right, just for the sake of doing what's right, people will despise you. And you have to get ready for being despised. Talk back to me if you can. You've got to be secure enough in yourself that whoever likes you or does not like you does not determine how you live your life. I wish I had a witness here. You can't let people's definitions of you put you in their box. You can't bury the light of your potential under the bushel of somebody else's expectation. Whenever you decide to do what's right, you will be hated. And listen, not just some folk you can't please. They don't like how you look. They don't like how you talk. They don't like how you dress. They don't like the sound of your voice. They don't know anything about you, but they dislike you over a rumor that you are a non-conformist. Oh, I wish I had my 7.30 cry. But don't worry about what they say. You just put blinders on and run your race. Live your life. Dream your dreams. Reach your destiny 
and the folk who love you gonna love you regardless and the folk who don't love you didn't love you to start with and you ain't gonna miss what you never had. I, 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 I told you last Sunday, you, you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Pat your own self on the back. Take yourself to the movies. Take yourself out to dinner. Talk to yourself on the phone. Because you got to learn that when you do what's right for the sake of doing what's right, you will be hated. This, 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 this coat, this coat of many colors, this coat of many colors, I I'm sure had many shades. It was a long flowing tunic. Uh, uh, Jason did my research for me on this coat of many colors. And ain't no sense in paying him if he can't do no research. He did my research on this coat of many colors, and it's a long flowing tunic that, that serves mainly to distinguish Joseph from everybody else. There's many colors, there's many sides to his personality, and all of us here have many sides to our personality. We are not just one thing. We, we are a, a multiple group of things that make us who we are. Uh, we are one way with one group. And, and that doesn't mean anything bad. It just means when you're with this group, that's the way you are. Then when you're with that group, that's the way you are. When we're in the hood, we talk one way. And, and you can't bring that hood talk on your job. Am I right? No, you can't go to your job talking to your boss talking about what's up. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? No, that's, that's on Scott Street we talk like that. We talk like that in Third Ward and, and Fifth Ward and, and, and on Tear Wester. But, but when you answer the phone, you can't talk like that. There's many sides to our personality. That's what I'm trying to get at. Joseph had many sides to his personality. There were many, but I just want to mention three. Uh, that first coat uh, that was worn on the outside was a coat of favor. 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 There's a difference between favor and favoritism. Favoritism is not about the person being favored. It's about the one showing the favoritism. Joseph was the son of Jacob's old age. And ain't nothing more crazy than an old man having a baby. So the favoritism came from Jacob. But because of Jacob's favoritism, that did not stop God's favor. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. Now, brothers and sisters, get me now. Hear me now. There are some people that God just chooses to bless with special favor. Some folk just born to make money. Like, like Mark Zuckerberg. In his dorm room eight years ago. Came up with Facebook. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, he had uh, an initial public offering the other day. Of over a hundred billion dollars. That's just faith. He's just born to do that. My mother could make a ham sandwich uh, taste like a beef tenderloin at Vic and Anthony's. 
Some, some people just have it like that. Talk back to me if you can. Some folk are smart without even studying the book. They can party all night long and go take the test and make a 97. And here you study all night and make a 79. That's just faith. Am I right about that? Now listen, it ain't no sense in you getting mad with people who got favor. Because you're getting angry, you're envying, you're hating them. It's not going to take God's hand off. It. Because God blesses who he wants to bless. I wish I had a witness here. God raises up who he wants to raise up because the favor comes from God. He was Jacob's favorite, but he was shown God's favor. He, he wore that coat of favor. And then he wore outwardly a coat, secondly, of success. Everything he put his hands on prospered. Everything Joseph touched was blessed because he was connected to God with a tender conscience a pure heart a firm will that everything he maneuvered around was successful uh, the, the, the King James says he was tending his father's flock but, 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 but the New Revised Standard Version said he was pastoring his father's flock. And, and the flock he tended fared better than his brother. The sheep he tended looked better than his brother's sheep. Everything he did was with excellence, was with success, even when nobody was watching. That's when you know you got integrity. When you do right and you're not in Houston. You miss that. When you do right and you're not in front of your Sunday school class. When you do right and it's not Sunday morning. You do right just because it's right to do right. Success. Success. Followed Joseph everywhere he went. And then God favored him to let him start dreaming. I said to Reverend Washington at lunch a few weeks ago, you know you're old, not in terms of years, but you know you're old when you love your memories more than you love your dreams. Somebody going to get that on the way to Papado. When you are nostalgic and reminiscent over yesterday and have no hope for what's coming tomorrow. That's the way things used to be. Used to be. Used to be. A whole lot of folk like church the way it used to be. You don't like these new people joining. You don't like these new changes being made. We've never done it that way before. Let's do it the way we used to do it. And, and when you love your, 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 your past more than you're excited about your future, You've lived too long. You are old. A fossil. A dinosaur. The eight track ain't coming back.
get rid of your eight track tapes of the Commodores, the Isley Brothers, the Temptations, Diana Ross and the Supremes. It's gone. They don't make ice trays anymore. Ice is coming out of the door of the refrigerator. That's the way things used to be. Talk back to me if you can. They're not putting water in the radiator of cars anymore. Matter of fact, you can't bring cars to these shade tree mechanics anymore. That's gone. That's used to be. That's in the past. Stop loving what's gone and be hopeful about what's on the way. Joseph Joseph is a dreamer and listen when you're a dreamer and a non-conformist when you are principled and know where you're going people will hate you now listen his brothers misunderstood his principled stand as pride and I need to say to somebody today, don't be proud of your principle. You miss that? Because the minute you get proud, you got principles, you just sin. Just have principles with humility. I, I want to I again say thank God to these young adults singing in the choir. Well, there were more of them that used to sing in the choir. But uh, they got out of the choir because uh, I'm not like them. I don't do what they do. Uh, my principles won't let me be like them. Then you got proud of having principles. And God stopped using you. Because God can use you any kind of way. With all your issues, with all your mess, with all your stuff, with all your junk, God can use you. Because if it were not for God's grace, all of us would be in hell this morning. I wish I had a witness here. God don't care nothing about you staying out all night. Just, just, just pull yourself together. Wipe your eyes, uh, drink a, you know, something to help your breath, uh, get you some breath freshener, and come on in like these other people used to do. You ain't been in church all your life. You ain't been holy all your life. You used to be a sinner. But God was patient with you, so you be patient with these young people because God had mercy on you. When you're principled and start dreaming, you're going to be despised. They hated him so much that his father sent him to Shechem to check on how they were treating the flock. And when he got to Shechem, somebody said they're gone to Dothan. And he left Shechem and went some 60 miles to Dothan. But they saw him before he saw them. I need somebody to help me preach it. And they said, here comes this dreamer. Let's kill him. And we will see what will become of his dream. But Reuben, the older brother, was tender towards his younger brother. And he decided to, to put Joseph in a pit until their anger would subside. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? But when Reuben turned his back, an Ishmaelite caravan 
was on his way to Egypt. And his brothers got him out of that pit and sold their own brother to a caravan on the way to Egypt. When Reuben came and found what they had done, he tore his clothes. He rent his mantle, the Bible says, and they lied again. They killed an animal, sprinkled that animal's blood on his little coat of many colors, brought it back to Jacob and told him what had befallen Joseph. And Jacob was beside himself with grief. But the favor of God was still on Joseph's life. Joseph told his brothers, you can have this little coat of favor. If, if that's what's bothering you, is that what has you green-eyed with envy and jealousy? You can have this outer coat of favor. You can have this outer coat of success. But that's a coat that Joseph wore on the inside that was non-negotiable. There was no compromising with this coat and it was a coat of honor. Because God favored him, which drew him close to God, which made him an honorable man. And he would not give up his honor no matter what his brothers did to him. Let me show you from the word how honorable Joseph was. The caravan sold him to Potiphar in Egypt. I need a Bible reader here. And Potiphar put Joseph over his entire household because he had favor, success, and honor. But Mrs. Potiphar was walking around in Victoria's Secret. Expensive perfume. Lounging in Joseph's presence. Throwing herself at young Joseph. Because he was a handsome, dark-skinned Hebrew boy. And she was lounging, throwing herself in his presence. And Joseph did not pretend not to see her. He did not see her because of his honor. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www. That lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy. <laughs>